This lecture in Climate and Earth 401 is about the conservation of momentum, often called Newton's Laws of Motion in classical physics. The conservation principle has been previously introduced, and if you need to understand the conservation principle, then you should review that lecture. The conservation of momentum is the foundation of the equations of motion for the atmosphere. This introduction in this lecture will be more general than the application of the atmosphere, and then we will spend a number of lectures building up the forces that are part of the momentum equation in the atmosphere. The basic characteristics of the momentum equation are, are mass and velocity, actually. Momentum is mass times velocity. So we have mass, we have position, and change in position is motion. Velocity is the change in position per unit time. And acceleration is the change of velocity per unit time. In this, we're starting to see the need for our calculus in order to be able to manage these equations. And then the other element in the conservation of momentum is force. Intuitively, a force is a push or pull. And in our field of weather and climate, we use force in a number of ways. In the der derivation of the momentum equation, it's this idea of a push or pull. In the climate system, sometimes we talk about forcing, which is the change to the energy balance of a system, which is something like a push or a pull, or something that can change the energy balance of the Earth. Formally, however, a force is a push or a pull, and a force is something that can change the motion of an object. We just defined motion as changing the position. Force is measured by its ability to change the velocity of an object with a certain mass, which is, again going back to definition, acceleration. Force has magnitude and direction. It is a vector. Newton's laws of motion are law one, bodies in motion remain in motion with the same velocity, and bodies at rest remain at rest unless acted upon by unbalanced forces. Law two, the rate of change of momentum of a body with time is equal to the vector sum of all the forces acting upon the body and is in the same direction. And then law three, for every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Mathematically, we're going to use the notation that bold will represent vectors. Newton's laws of motion are then represented by this equation, F force equals mass times acceleration. Force equals mass times acceleration. In general, we will work with force per unit mass, hence this form of the equation obtained simply by dividing m on both sides of the equation is acceleration is equal to f over m. Acceleration is defined as the change with time of velocity by convention in atmospheric science we usually use u to represent the velocity vector. Therefore, Newton's laws of motion are written as du dt equals f divided by m mass. u is a vector, and its components are generally written as u, v, and w, with u being the longitudinal velocity, often called the zonal velocity, and it is in the east-west direction. v is the north-south velocity is called the latitudinal and sometimes called the meridional velocity in our field. W is the velocity up and down, the vertical velocity, and it is called the vertical velocity. This is the vector form of the momentum equation or the conservation of momentum. MU, mass times velocity, is the definition of momentum. 
So with weather, we are interested frequently in the velocity of the wind, hence we are interested in momentum. We are interested in wind, we are interested in temperature, we are interested in precipitation if we look at the primary outputs of a weather forecast that we communicate to the public. Hence, u, the velocity, and the momentum equation are central to weather and weather forecasting. The conventions in meteorology are such that u is positive from west to east. Again, u is positive from west to east. A positive velocity, a positive wind, is from the west. And again, by convention in our field, these are generally called westerly winds. The u velocity is often called the zonal velocity. So you will hear frequently the zonal wind is westerly. If the zonal wind were easterly, that would be a negative u, meaning that the velocity, the wind, is coming from the east. V is positive from south to north. A positive wind from the south is a southerly wind. And the V velocity is often called the meridional velocity or the meridional direction. If we look at Newton's law again, and remember that we are interested in the sum of the forces, of all the forces, and we are interested in the imbalance of all those forces, then du dt, the acceleration, is equal to 1 over m, the mass, and this is the summation over i of all of the different types of forces. So i represents the different types of forces. What are the forces? In this class, we will consider the pressure gradient force, gravity force, viscous force, which is friction. We will spend a lot of attention on what are called apparent forces, which are forces that arise because we will be working in a rotating coordinate system, and this would be called a non-inertial coordinate system. If we go back to our definition of vectors, and the idea of unit vectors, then what this says about a non-inertial coordinate system is that the unit vectors change with time. Again, that means that the coordinate system is moving with time. And therefore, within this coordinate system, there are forces that are apparent because of the definition of the coordinate system. There are many other classical forces that are important in the Earth's atmosphere. Many of them will reside in the classification of our field of physical meteorology and include heat, radiative forcing, and electrical forcing. The total force is the sum of all of these forces. How do we express forces? Remember we're working with the fluid. We need some sort of abstract idea of how do we calculate the force at a point in, the, in a fluid. So what we will do is we will imagine an idealized parcel or particle of the fluid. And this will be perhaps an object to which we apply force. Again, within the fluid, we're going to imagine that we have identified something that we will call a particle or a parcel. We will usually use the term an idealized parcel. We will calculate the forces on this parcel, that is we will look at it in its three-dimensional shape, calculate the forces, the vector forces in the, in the different directions, and then we will look for the imbalance of that force to yield motion. We will take the limit of this parcel being infinitesimally small. So that's the idea of taking that parcel and moving it to a point. And this will lead to a continuous as opposed to a discrete expression of the force. In this case, what we mean by discrete is something that would have, let's say, 
finite differences in space to express them as opposed to being a continuous function of space as expressed by a derivative. This idea of keeping a discrete representation of forces and the idea that the discrete representation, if the spatial scales are small enough, is an excellent approximation to the continuous forcing is at the foundation of numerical weather prediction, climate models, and in general the numerical approximation to solutions of differential equations. We will use the concept of the continuum to extend this partial idea to the entire fluid domain. And that is the end of this introduction to the conservation of momentum in Newton's laws.